Good morning, my dear students. Today we are going to discuss about pH measurement and its control. At the end of the class, you will be able to know what is the need to measure pH, what are the methods available for pH measurement, and how to control pH in a fermentation process. We know that success of a fermentation process depends upon the existing of defined environmental conditions for biomass and product formation. To operate the fermenter successfully, it is important to understand what is happening inside the fermentation process and how to control uh, the process by using uh, specified uh, specific physical and chemical environment or conditions. Thus, measurement of temperature, pH, foam, uh, agitation, oxygen concentration, in the medium and other factors which have influence on the product formation uh, has to be continuously done during the process and we have to maintain all these variables constant at the specified values. So provision of such conditions requires careful monitoring of the fermentation process. This is also called as data acquisition and analysis. After that after monitoring, we will get the values. Based on that values, we have to compare it with the required set points. Okay, That generates deviation or error. Based on the error, we have to control the given process. In most processes, there is a need for pH measurement and control, in, uh, especially in fermentation processes, for obtaining the maximum yield of the biomass as well as other products. So here, for measurement, we use sensor. So in pH measurement process, pH sensor is an integral part of the fermentation equipment and measured value obtained it is directly used for the process control process. We know that in batch culture, the pH of actively growing culture will, will not remain constant for very long time. So its pH varies. So these rapid changes in the pH can be reduced by the careful design of the medium by selecting uh, carbon and nitrogen sources wisely, we can reduce pH changes. Also, by selecting the suitable buffers for the given process, we can reduce the pH changes in the process and type of feeding. This, that also will have some effect on the pH. So, this pH may be further controlled by the addition of appropriate quantities of ammonia or sodium hydroxide if it goes towards a highly acidic uh, side or we can add a sulfuric acid if the change is towards the alkaline side. But in fermentation process, normally the pH drift is only in one direction. So either we have to add acid or base for the given process. In fermentation process, pH is generally measured using pH meters. These meters uses electrodes for the measurement of the pH. Most commonly used electrodes, pH electrodes are Combined glass reference electrode, calomel or mercury electrodes, or ingot electrodes. These three are widely used. See, first coming to the combined glass reference electrode. pH measurement is routinely carried out using a combined glass reference electrode, which can withstand very high temperatures of 121 degrees and pressures of 138 kN per meter square. The electrodes used may be silver or silver chloride with potassium chloride or special formulations such as priscold by ingot is an example. Occasionally we can use calomel or mercury electrodes also. So generally these all pH electrodes are connected to the pH meters via leads and plaques. If the electrode and its fermenter have to be sterilized for maintaining, if the electrode and its fermenter have to be sterilized in an autoclave, then associated leads and plaques to a pH meter also should be sterilized. So they should be in a position to withstand high autoclaving temperatures and it's, uh, and they should retain their electrical resistance. That's why we can use combined glass reference electrodes. They can withstand high temperatures 121 degrees centigrade and pressures of 138 kN per meter square. However, Repeated sterilization may gradually change the performance of the electrode. That's why uh, after a certain period, we have to change the electrodes. For example, 
long culturing times processes in fermentation such as animal cell culture or continuous cell culture okay so where we have to keep the electrode for very long time okay so that may damage the electrode performance so we have to withdraw these electrodes for troubleshooting okay or, or for for example servicing or sterilization purposes okay these purposes we have to withdraw so you fermenter should have a housing option for housing uh, of all these things uh, and uh, we have to design this fermenter very carefully to ensure that fermentation doesn't become contaminated when the electrode is withdrawn or serviced or re-sterilized or inserted into the housing. So we have to be very careful in the designing of the fermenter. So when it comes to the ingold electrodes, they contain a ceramic housing, ceramic housing in the reference of cell, which has a pore dimensions capable of preventing fungal or bacterial infections. These uh, electrodes with a very small size, uh, uh, small pores, so they are capable of preventing fungal or bacterial infections. However, it is often desirable in animal cell culture to sterilize these reference electrolytes as well as the electrodes, surfaces and its seals, plugs, leads, etc. So here in electrode both liquid as well as gel filled electrodes are available. The liquid systems give faster response, most to stable response as well as accurate response. This pH control can be done by simple on off controller or we can go for complex PID controller. In the case of on-off controller, the controller is set to a predetermined pH value. When the signal actuates a relay, a pinch valve is opened or pump is started so that acid or alkali as per the requirement is pumped into the fermenter for a short time which is generally governed by the process timers. This uh, timers will last for 0 to 5 seconds. That means only during uh, only 0 to 5 seconds only this uh, acid or alkali will be added. So when this addition cycle is completed, it is immediately followed by a mixing cycle, which is governed by another process timer, which lasts for generally 0 to 60 seconds. So during this uh, mixing cycle, no further acid or alkali can be added. At the end of the mixing cycle, another pH reading will uh, be taken. And again, it will compare with the required value based on the error the controller um, pH will be controlled by the pH controller. So this is how we control uh, pH in a process. See here, if you have the, here we can use uh, on off controller as well as PID controller. Generally for low volumes, uh, uh, we use on off controller where overshoot is generally less. But in uh, industrial fermentations, we can go for PID controller. They generally overshoot may take place to control that one. You can go for PD or PID controller. So these are the widely used controllers. Now we'll see how this control uh, pH is controlled in a fermentation process with the, an example. Okay, for example, here we have taken a fermenter. Okay, this in this fermenter, just assume that we want to control the pH. So for controlling pH, here we use a pH electrode. So this pH electrode, it is inserted in the broth, fermentation broth. So it will continuously measure the, the pH value in the form of uh, electrical signal. So that value goes to the detector. Okay, so for different pH values, we will have different uh, currents. Okay, so based on the current strength or signal, okay, it will determine the actual pH present in the fermentation process. Then it will compare that value with the required set point. If any deviation it detects, okay, then immediately it will uh, switch on the, uh, it will activate the pump, okay. So that pump will start, okay. This pump will start for the predetermined time. Timer is set here. Generally, the addition cycle will be around 0 to 5 seconds. So in 0 to 5 seconds, either acid or basary base will come from this reservoir through this pump into this fermentation tank. So, 5 seconds this uh, uh, acid will be added to the uh, fermentation process. After completion of that uh, addition cycle, mixing cycle will follow. 
okay the mixing cycle generally lasts for 0 to 60 seconds it will vary from process to process but it will be between 0 to 60 seconds after completion of mixing because we have added acid or base as per the requirement then mixing will give the uh, effect very quickly okay so that pH may bring to its initial values or our required value okay in that way we will control the process once mixing cycle is over immediately second reading will be taken by the measured by the pH electrode so during addition and mixing cycle there will not be any measurement after completion of that entire process that is addition and mixing then only it will measure the another reading again the process will continue again it will measure if it detects any error again it will add a required amount of acid or base in that way it will control the entire process okay this is how we control the process in our system okay so you can use this diagram also for the same purpose this is fermenter here for some sensor we have used that is electrode so it will measure the value that will be compared with the set point that generates error based on the error controller will actuate the wall okay this wall is connected one side it is connected to the reservoir acid or base you can take another side it is uh, connected to the fermenter so in that way it will enter into the system any diagram you can use these are a lot of uh, diagrams also uh, only so you can use any diagram whatever diagram you like you can use it okay this is how we control the entire process okay so thank you for watching